All right, hey guys. So before we start, I just want to explain why we need signals in Godot. Um, signals are really good ways to avoid bad coding practices. And what I mean by that is, let's go to this example scene I have set up. Basically, when it comes to beginners, a lot of beginners really don't understand the concept of an anti-pattern. And what an anti-pattern is, is basically making a solution that will work in the immediate, but will only bring future problems right later on. If you ask a beginner, how do you get child two from child one? They will most likely say, get parent, get parent, get node, get node. Now it's gonna work, right? It's gonna work in the scene we have set up like this, but let's say you have child one in multiple scenes, right? And parent changes in some of the scenes, right? It's not the same parent in some of the scenes. Now, all of a sudden in the script, you're saying get parent, but get parent is now not the same parent as you wanted in the original place, right? So that's where problems arise, right? You just start getting these bad references and it'll just mess up your project if you go into bigger scale. So signals are pretty much the answer to this, the solution. Uh, signals are generally used for going up a scene tree um, or accessing sibling nodes, right? Which is pretty much the same as going up and then going down, right? Um, get node is mostly used for getting children and getting grandchildren because when you use get node from here, it's safe, right? It's safe to get these children because you're accessing a direct path. Like get parent is not um, a direct path to a specific node. It's to the parent node, right? But it's not like, for example, if I reference child one, I'll say get no child one, which is a specific node named child one. It's not get child, right? Hope that makes sense. Anyway, so to get into the actual tutorial, um, what we have set up here is just a grid based system. Uh, it's kind of a game, I guess. I guess you could say that. But basically, we have this master and it moves based on left, right, up, and down key inputs, you know, arrow keys. Uh, this puppet actually does not move at all based on the arrow keys. Well, not directly. It receives signals from here, right, based on what direction was pressed and then it moves this um, node. So if we look into Puppet, you'll see we actually have no function other than this move function. And all this move function does is update the position. But as you can see, the move function is not called anywhere, right? So how are we even moving this Puppet? We do it from the master using signals. So first of all, here is the general grid-based code we're using. Um, it's not really relevant to the tutorial. It was just easy to set up for an example. Um, so as you can see here, we have the signal puppet move and we declare it by the same way we do a variable, var tile size, signal puppet move, same thing. When we emit the signal, we wanna call the name of the signal and then we can optionally pass in a parameter. Now this parameter is the direction, right? Are you moving left to the left tile, right to the right tile, etc., etc. right? One thing um, you can do is actually put in some kind of parameter here to make sure the signal has to take in a parameter. Um, it's not really that necessary as long as you, you know, ensure that you're doing it at all times, but that's just a tip. So, now that we have this, we're emitting the signal. Now, what does emit signal do? Oh, sorry, I don't know why I have this. Um, what does emit signal do? Emit signal pretty much means that the signal is now in the world, right? It's somewhere. And all that needs to be done is be connected to a node. Now, when we connect it to a node, we could do it a couple of ways. You see here that we have this node, go into the, from inspector, go to node. And now we have this signal, puppet move. Well, that's our custom signal, right? And it's displayed here with the other signal. So that must mean that we can do it the same way, right? We click our puppet node that we want to connect it to. 
and the receiver method will define it as on master puppet move. Sure. Now, one thing we can do instead of doing this, making a whole separate uh, function, as you can see, we already have this function move, right? So we could just connect it directly to the, uh, that function instead of making some other function. So let's just do that. Let's call it move and we connect. And see now it's connected to puppet move. Um, one thing you do have to notice though is that when you create the signal, uh, usually it doesn't come with this automatically generated, right? You have to pass in the variable if you have a variable, right? Since we're emitting it with a parameter, we need to take in a parameter, right? If you do this, it's gonna give you all sorts of error because it's emitting a signal with a parameter, but you're not receiving it in a function that is taking a parameter in. So anyways, now that we have that, right? The signal is connected. And what is the signal connected to, right? If we go into master, you'll notice that it's connected to the direction we move in, right? So we'll emulate all the direction presses of the master. Recall that the master is red. And if we move, you'll see that our puppet moves with, with the master. Now, that's cool. We're done, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're pretty much done. Like, that's all you have to do. Um, another way you can do this, instead of doing it directly from the editor, let's do it within code. So I have this really um, generic template set up here just to show you guys what I'm doing. So first we get the node emitting the signal, right? Then we connect it. We connect the signal name to the node receiving the signal and the receiving function inside of the node receiving the signal. Now, following this template, let's go through it real quick. So the node emitting the signal, what is that? That is master, correct? All so, right. So we connect it. What is the signal name? You'll see it's actually displayed here, so we could just click that. Um, you could type it, um, it doesn't really matter. Now, put a comma, node receiving the signal. That would be puppet, correct? Right. Nice. Okay. And what function are we connecting it to? We're connecting it to move, right? Now, this works exactly the same as connecting the signal inside of this, right? It's the same thing. You'll notice if you run it, it'll work perfectly. Now, just to show you guys, like, that it's actually working like that. It's not taking in any inputs. Um, let's not emit the signal, right? Let's just show that it's actually working. So if we just do this, if we move, you see the puppet is not moving, right? The puppet is not moving at all, right? So this is pretty much the basics of signals. Um, all I'm gonna talk about right now is pretty much why you make this signal inside of here, All right? Why do you make the signal inside a world instead of master or puppet? Well, like I said before, signals are useful for when you want to access a, sing a sibling node or a node above, right? But when you access the sibling node, you're pretty much going above and then down. So when you do that, you want to avoid using get parent, like I said, right? So you want to do you want to find a common parent node between these two nodes and then connect the signals from there. Why? Because you already have a direct reference to these nodes, right? You're never gonna um, be accessing some random node. You're not doing get node child, right? You're doing get node master, get node puppet. They, these are specific nodes. And if those nodes don't exist, then it'll tell you, right? It's very easy. Now. What a lot of people do, which is pretty bad in my opinion, is let's say we're in master, right? And, oh, I, that's why I had this function. So let's just call it func um, bad practices, right? This is not an actual function. I'm just showing you guys what are some bad practices. Um, so number one, right? What is the most common thing to do to get puppet? We do get parent, get node, get 
node puppet, right? And, you know, it doesn't look that bad in code, but the problem is, like I said before, get parent can change depending on, you know, how many, where your uh, node exists on different scenes, etc., etc. right? Technically, if you're working on one scene the whole time, like one world scene, right? You're not gonna run into issues, but it's better to practice good coding practices be in the beginning rather than learn it later and regret it, right? So that's one bad thing or bad practice that I see a lot of people do. Another thing is they do this, and this is probably the worst, um, worst thing they could probably do. So they access the root directly and then go to world and puppet. See, the problem with this is you're accessing the root, but if you change scenes at any time, the root, like this world will always change, right? And so that's such a bad problem. And you really don't want to do this. There's a reason why it's so hard, right? Not hard, but why it's kind of long to write this out, right? Because it's not really meant to do this. Um, so these are two bad practices you want to get rid of. For the intermediate people, um, there are some ways that you use get parent, right? When can you use get parent safely? Um, let's say like a node is always being instanced, right? Um, as a child of a, another node, let's call that node um, parent, right? So by that parent node, it's always going to be a child of that parent node. At that point, you could do get parent, right? Because if you're instancing it in code, then yeah, the parent's always going to be that parent node. So I guess in that case, it's fine, right? But in general, just connect the signal, right? Um, and that's pretty much it. There's a lot more to say about signals, um, but like I said before, this is just a beginner tutorial and yeah, that's it. All right. Thank you guys.